Before I start, I'd like to tell you the context in which I work. So a very short video to show you the context. Please, thank you. Failure is an incomplete word. Success and failure together makes a circle. And the definition of success has to be given very strongly for the word failure to emerge. In reality, there really isn't anything like a failure. It's always part of a learning curve. It is a process of an action leading to a goal. Edison experimented with 10,000 materials before he finally, and failed every time before he finally found the, uh, the filament needed for a light bulb and illuminated the world. Would you call all these aborted attempt failures or were they indicators of a path leading to his success? There is failure only when an operation stops before completing the circle. So 12 years ago, I witnessed the chores or these islands and it was like a lost world. Everything that uh, would, would be there to ease your life, you know, ease your, find st your life and your stability, could not exist in this environment. Nothing that we take for granted could be implemented here. So when the idea of the floating hospital came, everyone said one thing only, the common reaction, it would fail, it would never work, impossible. After some years, when the floating hospital worked, thousands of people were getting benefited by it, I had this immense feeling of success. You know, wow, it works. I forgot to look around me. And one day I heard that a child had died in an island close by. So we rushed. And we found that the child had died of one of the most common diseases in Bangladesh, which was diarrhea. The mother did not even know that salt and sugar or molasses, which was available on the island, could have perhaps saved the child. She did not have three euro cents to bring the child to the hospital, and I had felt that everyone who needed care could have come to us. How were you not, how was I then not overwhelmed by this feeling of total failure? But then we went on, we moved on, and what we tried to do was redesign our project. We learned from that and redesigned the project, and we put in what we call the satellite clinics. And these were paramedical teams which were giving prevention, awareness, primary health care to the very doorsteps of the people we wanted to serve. And once again, I had this feeling that it was working and it was a success. Again, one day I go to visit another island, and I find a child totally burnt. And this child cried in pain for three days. And in that island, there was not even 
no, there was certainly no medicines, and there was no ice, there was no cold water, nothing to ease the pain, and after three days, the child stopped crying out of sheer exhaustion. You know, it was, all the feeling of success was totally overridden by an absolute sense of failure. And I felt, how can we proceed? We put in, and we stepped back once again and redesigned the project. And then we put in what we call the community medics, which were local women from the chores. We trained them for three, four years, put them on the island so that they're there 24 hours a day, and they would uh, give uh, health advice, they would refer cases to us, and then they would uh, have a stock of medicines which could be given out in such emergencies. And of course, to improve them now, we've put in some telemedicine. So really like a phoenix, you know, rising out of the ashes of despair, hopelessness, sadness, the, we built the Friendship Fortier Healthcare model. And, the, we, and these modifications that we made on the project came not by researches and surveys, but they came from real true life experiences, which helped us. And however, you know, we must not underestimate that failure has a cost. And we face that because, especially in the field of humanitarian work and development, the responsibility of failure is not borne by those who are responsible for it, like us. The, it is borne by the child we could not save. It is borne by the donors who give us the funds and trust. And so it becomes imperative on us to make it into a learning. Of course, it's much better to learn from somebody else's mistakes. And we often try to do that, you know, what not to do in such cases. And uh, one, of, one of them being that we learn that so often programs fail because we need to value the sustainability, or we, we need to value the sustainability of our projects on, for the people and not for the sustainability of our own organization. This we learned. Uh, failure is also a matter of perception. You know, it's how you see it. The very same action sometimes can be perceived as a failure or a success, depends on how you look at it. And if you take the example of a floating hospital again in this area, before I thought that I would do the hospital, I, had, I was, I'm not from the development sector, so I took the idea to a founder of a very well-known NGO in Bangladesh, and I said that, would, you, would he be interested in the idea? And he said, he looked at it and he said, no, it would be a total failure. It is so unsustainable, it cannot work. And in my deepest imagination, you know, I could not imagine how that was so. The needs were so immense, the care that this hospital could bring would be so incredible, it was so unavailable, how could it possibly be a failure? It would impact lives for the future. And then I realized that he was speaking from a very limited perspective, which is financially, it would never be a viable project. But for him, that was what was important. Whereas for me, what was important was the impact that it would create, the, the future that each person that we would address would have. And that was what was so different in our, in our perspective. It is also about choices. You know, failure, because I chose it. You know, Bangladesh is a country where we have no social security system. So if you want to make a hospital for the ultra poor, it is one choice, or you make it for it to be financially viable. And we chose the first because that was our mandate. And in that, it, today, even today, though none of our hospitals are financially viable, we still consider it to be a success. It would have been a failure if we had shifted from our mandate and tried to make it financially viable and not serve the ultra poor. So, you see, failure is about, about choices and perceptions. And even today, some people may consider our hospitals, which is today serving over 30,000 people, and we hope 20 more by the end of the year, 50,000 people by the end of the year, still to be unsustainable not viable, simply because we don't earn money from it. So we need to ask not them, but we also need to ask the people. The little girl in that island who was born with cataract, who was born with cataract and was blind, and she had a cataract operation and she can see today. We have to ask this little boy, you know, who runs about the islands with his friends now playing football, 
just with, because she has had an op orthopedic operation, or the woman who suffered years of pain and social ostracism with a, for, with a prolapsed uterus, whether it's a success or a failure. Failure is a semantic game. You know, it's a lim it's limitations are put arbitrarily. It's a concept above a word. It is how it is used. It is how it is perceived. And every experience becomes a failure or a success depending on you. So it can become a failure if you do not continue. Otherwise, if you look at it from a different perspective, it becomes, gives you a world of opportunity. Thank you.